Do tannins mess with your CO2 levels? It sounds like a weird question, but if you run a plant tank with CO2 injection and you love that black water vibe, you might be wondering, can I run CO2 in a planted black water system? Well, today we're diving into the chemistry and how tannins might be stirring the pot because what looks like tea could be tweaking your tank in more ways than you think. When you inject CO2 into a planted tank, you're doing it for one reason, plant growth. CO2 dissolves into the water, forms carbon acid, drops the pH, and your plants love it. But when you toss in a bunch of Indian almond leaves, seed pods, and cones, for example, things get murky, or like literally. Tannins release humic substances that soften water, buffer pH, and shift water parameters over time. So the question you should be asking is, do tannins actually change the CO2 availability or mess with your readings. First, CO2 dissolves in water and forms carbonic acid. That acid splits into bicarbonate and hydrogen ions, lowering your pH. Now, here's the kicker. The amount of free CO2 available to plants depends on your pH and KH. At lower pH, the more CO2 stays as dissolved gas. At higher pH, it turns into bicarbonate, which most plants can't use directly. Tannins are acidic. They contain polyphenols and humic substances that can lower pH and bind with metals and organics. Some studies show that humic substances affect buffering capability, but not in the same way as carbonate hardness. Instead of resisting pH swings, tannins may cause greater daily fluctuations, especially in low KH water. So now imagine this. You're injecting CO2 in the morning, your lights come on, photosynthesis kicks in, CO2 drops, pH rises. Tannins might subtly tweak the whole swing by changing how your water buffers carbonic acid. It's not always a dramatic change, but a finely tuned setup, even small shifts can add up. Now I'll be honest, I haven't ran a full experiment yet, but based on what we know chemically, tannins could influence the way your water handles acid. Less KH means more room for pH to swing, and if tannins drop your pH a little, that might make your drop checker look greener or bluer than you expect, even if your CO2 injection rate hasn't changed. There's also the light factor. Tannins reduce clarity and lower par. So even if your CO2 is stable, reduced light can slow photosynthesis, which indirectly affects how quickly plants consume that CO2. It's a cascade of subtle and connected effects. Here's the bigger question though. In a black water setup, is CO2 injection even worth the effort? Black water aquariums aren't about chasing high tech growth. They're about recreating the calm, shaded, organic feel of places like the Rio Negro or the Amazon River. These rivers are stained deep brown from decaying leaf litter, branches and soil. The water is soft, acidic and often poor in nutrients. Plants? Well, you won't see dense carpets of Monte Carlo down there. What you do see are floating plants, and patches of submerged grasses, and lots of epiphytes clinging to submerged roots. In these environments, fish like cardinal tetras, pencil fish, and dwarf cichlids thrive in low light and low oxygen. But they're not surrounded by lush CO2-fed growth. They're surrounded by shadows, silence, and slow decay. Trying to push high CO2 in a tank designed to mimic that world, it's like adding a turbocharger to a canoe. It's technically possible, but it's wildly out of place. So do tannins affect CO2 in planet tanks? Not directly, but they nudge everything from pH buffering to light levels to plant behavior. Tannins shift the dynamics gently, but meaningfully. But maybe the real impact is philosophical because once you understand what black water aquariums are really imitating from the floodplains of the Amazon to shallow waters, one thing you do realize, it's not about perfect growth, it's about letting nature speak. And here's the question I'll leave you with. If tannins shift the way plants access CO2, could we eventually tailor botanical mixes to optimize plant growth? Now that is something worth testing.